Ningxingopterus was typified by the possession of about 50 teeth, 12 in each upper jaw and 13 in each lower jaw. The teeth are curved, conical and pointed. The skull has a length of 38 mm the snout is elongated and tapering. The lower jaws show an incipient crest. Altmuelopterus was a short-tailed pterodactyloid pterosaur with a wingspan of roughly 1 meter, about the same size as many smaller hawk species. 150 million years ago, most of Europe was covered in warm shallow seas, with a few low-lying islands. The islands were dominated by low scrub vegetation, and were ringed by lagoons. It was a carnivore, probably hunting for small animals and fishes on the beach or the islands. Pterodactylus was the first pterosaur to be named and identified as a flying reptile and one of the first prehistoric reptiles to ever be discovered, many confuse the two terms pterodactyls and pterosaurs. It was a generalist carnivore that probably fed on a variety of invertebrates and vertebrates. Like all pterosaurs, it had wings formed by a skin and muscle membrane stretching from its elongated fourth finger to its hind limbs. The fossil remains of Eric Tylus have been found only in the Salmhofen limestone of Bavaria. Like all pterosaurs, its wings were formed by a skin and muscle membrane stretching from its elongated fourth finger to its hind limbs. It was supported internally by collagen fibers and externally by keratinous ridges. Several well-preserved fossils have shown that it was covered in a short, dense coat of bristly pycnofibers. Cycnoramphus's jaws arced outwards, creating an opening that seems to have become more pronounced as individuals reached adulthood. Soft tissue impressions in the fossil also show some sort of stiff flanges on each side of the upper jaws, covering the gap and giving it a sort of bulldog-like appearance. The function of this jaw structure is unknown for certain, but it's been speculated to be a specialization for cracking open hard-shelled prey like mollusks. Eocypterus was a medium-sized short-tailed pterosaur with robust limbs. Both specimens were sub-adults, with wingspans of 1.2 meters the proportions of the bones in its wings are distinctive and allow Eocypterus to be differentiated from other pterosaurs. It lived in a lush temperate forest about 124 million years ago. Most Archaeopterodactyloids are found at the margins of waterways, where they likely foraged. As an adaptation to filter feeding, Liodactylus had approximately 150 long, comb-like teeth packed closely together. It is both the earliest known tenochasmidid and the first filter-feeding pterosaur from the Jurassic. Later and more specialized tenochasmidids differ from Liodactylus in having longer snouts, smaller openings in the skull, and more teeth. Tenochasma is notable for its unique dental adaptations. Its teeth were needle-like and closely packed together, forming a comb-like structure. This dental arrangement suggests that it likely had a specialized diet, possibly feeding on small aquatic organisms. Multiple individuals found in the same fossil sites suggest that these pterosaurs may have exhibited social behavior, potentially nesting and roosting together. Pterodostro probably strained food with its tooth comb, a method called filter feeding, also practiced by modern flamingos. Once it caught its food, it probably mashed it with the small, globular teeth present in its upper jaw. Like other tenochasmatoids, Pterodostro has a long torso and proportionally massive and splayed hind feet, adaptations for swimming. Because of its long torso and neck and comparatively short legs, it was unique among pterosaurs in having difficulties to launch. Even with the pterosaurian quadrupedal launching mechanism, it would have required frantic and fairly low angled takeoffs possible only in open areas. 
Bipeopterus is unique among tenacasmidids, as the wing finger appears to be made up of just three phalanges. All other pterosaurs except some nyctosaurids have four wing finger phalanges. It was a small pterosaur, with a wingspan just over one, about the same size as a mallard duck. Mogonopterus was a large pterosaur, apart from the size, the describers established some diagnostic traits. The jaws are very elongated and have straight edges. The total number of teeth in the skull is at least 62. The large skull opening, the Fenestra nasoantorbitalis, is rectangular and represents 22% of the snout length. The back of the skull bears a long and narrow parietal crest. It is unknown whether this crest was flat or rod-like, its length cannot be determined because it reaches the edge of the slabs. Although Platyloricus would have been similar in size to large Nathosaurines, its skull length was estimated at a minimum of 40 cm, the different shape of its spoonbill, presence of an apparently horn-covered pad on the palate, and smaller teeth suggest it did not feed in the same way, perhaps stirring up water-dwelling animals from muddy or weedy environments. Not a lot of things is known of the skeleton of Odogopterus, but based on comparisons to other tenacasmidids, its wingspan would have been roughly 1.5 meters, like other tenacasmidids, it is thought to have fed by wading into shallow water and dabbling in weeds and mud looking for small invertebrate prey. It lived on the shores of a large inland lake within the Ordos Basin, and was surrounded by mountains. Pangupterus is known from a mostly complete lower jaw, which bears 36 slender, evenly spaced, conical teeth jutting out at an angle on its tip. Some teeth are smaller than the others, and appear to be replacement teeth. Such teeth are not seen in any other toothed pterosaurs with comparable material, and this specialized dental morphology is indicative of a passivorous lifestyle. Like other pterosaurs, Ecrandrico had wings formed by a membrane of skin stretched between its elongated fourth finger and the body. This wing structure enabled it to fly and glide through the air. While its specific diet is not known, it is likely that it had a varied diet. As darkids are generally believed to have been opportunistic feeders, capable of scavenging, hunting small animals, and possibly even fishing. Volgadraco is known from fragmentary remains made up of a partial lower jaw, two neck vertebrae, a partial torso vertebra, and a portion of the femur. The preserved lower jaw is from near the tip, and shows that the end of the jaw was long and pointed, roughly triangular when seen from the side, and top. The chin had a long ridge-like crest on the bottom and the jaws bared no teeth. The bone texture indicates that it was covered in beak tissue. At the time Tethodraco lived, about 67 million years ago, global sea levels were higher than today and the modern phosphate mines were underwater several kilometers out to sea. Africa was further south than it is now, and the nearby coast would have been rocky and arid, much like the coastal areas in modern Yemen. The phosphate mines preserve fossils of at least seven species of pterosaurs from three families, showing that pterosaur diversity remained high until the mass extinction. In addition to the pterosaurs, abundant fossils of marine reptiles, fish, and marine invertebrates are known from the locality. Don Draco was a pteranodontid, and like all pteranodontids it had a long toothless beak with upturned tips, and a crest at the back of its skull. Pteranodontids had long narrow wings and short necks and are thought to have soared over the open sea. Not all paleontologists agree that Dondraco is a valid species. Paleontologist Mark Witten notes that no complete skull of Pteranodon is known and it's difficult to compare specimens without overlapping parts. Pteranodon had well-developed wings with a wingspan optimized for gliding and soaring. It likely used air currents to stay aloft for long periods, scanning the water below for potential prey. 
It was primarily a fish eater, and its long, pointed beak and sharp beak tips were well suited for capturing and holding slippery prey. Fossil evidence suggests that it likely skimmed the water surface with its lower jaw to scoop up fish. It is known for exhibiting sexual dimorphism, meaning that males and females had distinct physical differences. Male pteranodon individuals typically had larger crests on their heads compared to females, which may have played a role in courtship displays or species recognition. Nyctosaurus was a mid-sized pterosaur that lived along the shores of the Niobrara Formation. It has been suggested that it would have flown similar to modern-day soaring birds such as albatrosses, which consisted of flying very long distances and rarely flapping. A few scientists had initially hypothesized that this crest, which resembles an enormous antler, may have supported a skin headsail used for stability in flight. While there is no fossil evidence for such a sail, studies have shown that a membranous attachment to the bony crest would have imparted aerodynamic advantages. All known specimens of Barbarodactylus were uncovered in a three-year dig that unearthed about 200 pterosaur specimens. Like other nyctosaurids, it had upward-curving jaws. The only known cervical is also rather typical for nyctosaurids, as it is proportionately short and broad, a morphology also present in the related pteranodontids. The scapulocoracoid is fused, meaning that the animal was probably an adult. It is boomerang-shaped, and the two bones form a 60-degree angle. The hatchet-shaped deltopectoral crest is in a notably distal location in relation to the humeral head. This crest is short and broad, and the expanded tip is weakly developed, which are basal features. The teeth of Longchenctorus indicate that it was a carnivore, but unlike most pterosaurs, it probably didn't consume much fish. Instead, Longchenctorus and its closest kin may have been scavengers, using their long snouts to probe carcasses, and their small interlocking teeth at the tips of the jaw to clamp down on meat and pry it free. When it was alive, about 120 million years ago, it lived in a temperate forested environment with many rivers. Istiodactylus was a relatively large pterosaur, with an estimated wingspan of about 4 to 5 meters it had a long, toothed beak and a robust, well-built body. Fossil evidence suggests that it had a wingspan comparable to that of a small airplane. One of its distinguishing features is its unique dental adaptations. It had a long, slender beak filled with numerous sharp teeth. The teeth were conical and pointed, ideal for capturing and holding onto slippery prey, such as fish. Based on the teeth presence and anatomy, Linlongopterus was excluded from Asdarcoidea and Sungaripteridae, which are toothless and have very specialized teeth respectively. As such, it was placed within Pteranodontoidea. Within Pteranodontoidea, pteranodontids have no teeth, and istiodactylids have triangular teeth, different from the elongate teeth of Linlongopterus. Pterosaurs like Boreopterus are interpreted by Onwen as soaring animals, like today's albatrosses and frigate birds. However, it has also been suggested that Boreopterids foraged while swimming, trapping small prey with their needle-like teeth, a method similar to that of modern Platanista dolphins. Etodactylus was known to have a throat pouch extending from the middle of its lower jaw to its pycnofiber-covered neck. The excellent preservation of the six specimens also revealed a triangular crest above its head and a backward-pointing lappet at the rear of its skull. Osiodraco lacks a keel or crest and is convex on top, with a median narrow deep groove not reaching the tip, but flat at the bottom. As far as can be judged from the empty elliptical tooth sockets, 
the lower jaws carry at least five pairs of teeth, which are rather large and become more outwards inclining and procumbent towards the front. Hemipters was assumed that a clear sexual dimorphism was discovered, with the largest specimens sporting the largest crests being the males, while smaller individuals were females with smaller crests. This was seen as a refutation of the hypothesis that with pterosaurs, only the males possessed crests. Tomography scans of fossilized hemipterous eggs suggests that young hemipterous had well-developed thigh bones for walking, but weak chests for flight. It was believed in the past that Ornithochiris was one of the largest pterosaurs to have existed, with a wingspan possibly measuring 10 meters wide. It had relatively narrow jaw tips compared to the related Tropiognathus, which had prominently expanded rosettes of teeth, as well as a more developed, keeled, crest compared to Ornithochiris. Another feature that made it unique and unlike its relatives, was that its teeth of were mostly vertical, rather than set at an outward pointing angle. Because the type species was originally named based on poorly preserved fossil material, the genus Ornithochiris has suffered enduring problems of zoological nomenclature. Tropiognathus is regarded as the largest pterosaur found in the southern hemisphere, only rivaled by the huge Asdarkids. Its skull bore distinctive convex, keeled, crests on its snout and underside of the lower jaws, and this was prominent, well-developed, and relatively large in Tropiognathus, especially in males, however, compared to other relatives such as Ornithochiris, they were relatively thin rather than thick. The teeth of Gidraco are very distinctive. Of the 23 teeth of the upper jaw the first is long and very narrow, pointing nearly horizontally forward. The next three teeth are enormous in size, very long, robust, pointed and slightly recurved. They gradually point more downwards. These are followed by a series of three medium-length downward pointing straight teeth, of which the middle one, the sixth, is the shortest. The remaining 13 teeth constitute a long row of small elements gradually diminishing in size. This arrangement is mirrored by the 18 teeth of the lower jaw. Anhangara was a fish-eating animal with a wingspan of about 4.5 meters like many other anhangarids, it had rounded crests at front of its upper and lower jaws, which were filled with angled, conical but curved teeth of various sizes and orientations. Like many of its relatives, the jaws were tapered in width, but expanded into a broad, spoon-shaped rosette at the tip. The jaw crests were not present in all Anhangara, those with crests may be of different age and sex from those without, and the crests may be influenced by sexual selection. Ferrodracoys named after the ironstone that the fossils were found in. Many of Australia's Cretaceous animals were close relatives of those found in South America, due to an earlier land connection via Antarctica, but surprisingly Ferrodraco wasn't particularly closely related to any South American ornithochirids. Instead, it seems to have been part of a lineage known from halfway around the world in Europe, suggesting that these pterosaurs were capable of crossing long distances over oceans to disperse between continents. As with most pterosaurs, the snout of Mithunga was hollow, with a supporting internal boxwork of bone, as could be observed at breaks. The jugal bone apparently extended to a point below the front of the large skull opening, the nasoantorbital fenestra. There are at least eight teeth in each maxilla. That is also the minimal number in the dentary. <laughs>